Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Homeschool Hangout. I'm Jacqueline. And I'm Sugar Jones, homeschool mom and awesome blogger. <laughs> yeah, very awesome blogger. And we're here to talk about homeschooling, what's going on in our weeks, issues that we know of, and hopefully give you some tools, tips, and ways to equip you, as long and along with help you feel like you're not alone in this crazy journey. So, Sugar, what's been going on with you in the homeschool world this week? Okay, so you just asked me, did you have anything go on this week? And I was like, oh, yes. Here's, I've already mentioned to you before that our school is an online school. We can do, there are a lot of things that we can do offline and plug in the information or the um, updates and everything that we've completed offline. We can plug that into our online system, our OLS. This week, our OLS was attacked. And this is like, countrywide and it's a really big system it's K-12 so of course they're being attacked just like Target got attacked and just like every big huge system gets attacked and so we haven't been able to actually log in to get any of our work done this week today actually was a little bit better it's been kinda sketchy whether we can get on or not the good thing for me is I always forget to log attendance so I don't have to worry about getting yelled at this week for not logging attendance because I couldn't get on to log it. But like their, you know, like their math, um, science and history, those we have worksheets, but a lot of what we rely on is online. So we had to kind of pull back off of those and just do a lot of vocab and composition and reading and you know all the stuff that you have to do offline anyway um, and then we're gonna have to just double up on the math science and history next week my daughter's history lessons she can actually do offline and then record later but my sons are still heavily online based so you know and it was so funny because um, when we when we're traveling sometimes we'll pop into my mom's house and I've been begging her please get high-speed internet she finally got it so that's where I'm at right now I'm in her little Zen corner her little Buddhist Zen corner she's Catholic but um, <laughs> <laughs> Catholics kind of sprinkle shit in everywhere so anyway, that's this is her Zen corner um, her, anyway Yes, and she did, and so we've got this high speed. So we get on, and we're like, we can't get on. And my mom, I'm not telling her. There's no way I'm telling her that you know the OLS has been attacked. But you know, it it really made me stop and go, okay, we're okay. We're just gonna have to revamp everything. Our entire week has been completely rescheduled. And then today, my daughter is completely out of her mind. She's going to a Demi Lovato concert, and that's really all she's thinking about. So no work has been accomplished today. I think like. Well, like three vocab lessons. Four. <laughs> Liar. Four. She needs so. to be doing um, a prose analysis on her lyrics and what, what kind of, uh, you know, canter they're written in and the social consciousness value of the Demi Lovato song. There you go. <laughs> yes, yes. What is, what is the, the social contribution of Camp Rock? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh my word! No. Oh my word! She's. I gotta show you what she's doing right now. Hold, hold, please. She's all, Mom. Can I put mascara on? I'm like, Oh no, no, no. Lip gloss. But I am dropping her off. I'm dropping her out for a friend's house. Um, and they're leaving from there, and I'm just dropping them off with their little teeny bopper frenzy, and I'm bailing, which is why I need to bail on you early today. But I was thinking about this too, and we were gonna talk about a couple other things. But I was thinking about how homeschoolers that are distance learning are still socializing with their friends through FaceTime, through Skype, through games that they play, you know, on their phones or on their devices if you don't give their kid a phone. What's the difference? But anyway, um, it's kids that are not in school all day are, st are still getting to really do some fun social stuff without all the mean girl drama or the picking on the weird kid or that sort of thing you know so I'm kind of I was really really watching what was going on and the fact that she's still able to go to a concert with kids that she went you know she took a year and year and a half that she went to regular school so those kids that she met there that's who she's going to the concert with so kinda of cool oh, yeah I, I think definitely um, homeschooling does not hinder the social interaction. To me, it actually, as they get older, allows it to exist and exist more healthily because 
you know, I, I know we're not the only ones who get busy with activities and everything. And you tag that on to a traditional six day school day, a six hour school day, and the homework. Uh, there wouldn't have been time for me to go to a concert on a Thursday mm -hmm. when I was in high school. I, I no. know because I was told no, there's not time for you to go to a concert. Well, and then you have to miss school the next day, right? And so the girls that she's going with, they're actually missing school tomorrow. And how which late I, are they staying out, young lady? I have no idea. I'm not in charge. <laughs> I'm I'm not. I'm that mom. I drop her off. She's your responsibility. You bring her back to me alive. That's all I care. <laughs> Oh my they're, goodness! They're going to be out all night. I'm sure they're going to be out going out for dessert afterwards, and they're just going to be screaming and crying all night. I don't want to be, I don't want to be around for the Teeny Bopper concert afterglow. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I still remember getting my hair crimped so I could go. I, oh my god! I love that you said that, Jacqueline. I was like, they should totally crimp their hair. It's like you know, it's back. Thing. It is so. I know. <laughs> I was like, they should crimp their hair. No, mom's shutting her mouth. She's all straightening it. I'm like, <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I hear, I hear outrage She's in like, the no, back. No, look, look. She's like showing me her glossy hair. I'm like, mm mm. You gotta do like the funky pony. You tip. crimp for concerts. <laughs> That's right. Even Christian concerts. I mean, come on. <laughs> Simmer down, child. <laughs> This is like uh, I she's 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 anyway. So not in my homeschool world. My homeschool world this week is I've been sick. So my loving friends oh. shared their illnesses. So but there's the other side. Once again, storm is ravaging the East Coast, and I am seeing a plethora of what do you do with these kids? Yeah. How do you get work done? How do you deal with deadlines? How do you deal with all that? You know, just asking any parent who works from home, including as homeschoolers. And it was interesting, some of the Facebook conversations I've had in the last 48 hours, including we're a team and I have a deadline, so you all are going to leave me alone. That yeah. is an operation mode in my household. I'm yep. sorry. Yep. You know. Unless, unless you're bleeding. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's amazed me because I get into these conversations and I expect these kids to be all under 10 or something. And they're not. They're like going up to like 16 and they won't do anything except fight with each other. And I'm like, then you're just not threatening enough. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you just haven't pulled out the stink guy. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Well, and there's the, hey, you can't go outside. So when I shrink your world so you can't communicate with anyone either, you know, <laughs> There will be no phones. There will be no games. Right. There will be no if you can't be peaceable while you're using that. But it just it once again is. I hate to say it. Oh, telephone! No way. Jesus, Jesus is calling. Oh, if only <laughs> he's got a direct line. He doesn't need to use the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but it it once again I cannot be the only homeschool mom who is slightly amused by watching everyone freak out about what to do with their kids. Yeah. Well, the one thing too though is we're. You know, like if, if we were trapped indoors the whole time, I would be freaking out too. I I live and breathe by going out into the sun every day, and I cannot imagine we, even the homeschool kids that just have not been able to go outside in like seven, eight, nine, ten days, they must be going super crazy, poor babies. So oh, one thing definitely. that we, when I lived up north and we had the gray days and everything, one thing that I did learn was that you ha you can buy, like, well, I don't know anymore because, you know, laws have changed. There are light boxes that you can buy that actually kind of, you know, create what the sun does to your mood. Of course, oh, this, yeah. is in, this is in Northern California. We have all this stuff. And then one natural um, thing that helps is, and, and, I, I know a lot of kids probably don't like this, but spinach. Mm -hmm. Spinach is the best thing to elevate the mood. And I got into eating so much spinach when I was living there. And ever since then, it's, spinach is like my lettuce. I don't even really use lettuce anymore because spinach is it's just tasty to me. You know, you can toss it with some mandarin oranges and a little bit of, you know, dressing or whatever. Whatever makes it. But the... Um, but the benefits of spinach are just so great and keeps everybody happy. But fresh, not don't don't get that crap in a can. Don't get it in a can. But actually, the stuff, the frozen chopped spinach, the frozen, is pretty good. yeah, yeah, that works too. I, I use that you know, a lot. You can toss that with your eggs, you know. And you know, I know I, we're talking about food or whatever. But food, our breakfasts are such a big part of our day. If we don't have a good breakfast, my kids don't start school. 
you know, so I'm, that's another thing that I'm glad about that we have a little leisurely time in the morning is that they actually get to sit down and have breakfast. So throw in some spinach in the eggs, not in the cereal. That would be disgusting. Let's be honest. I don't make <laughs> eggs in the morning. My husband makes oatmeal, and it's good, and it's healthy, and we live with it. Well, there's I, other stuff that, that people can add into their diets to find to, yes. you know, kind of tone down. Because, yeah, man, you got to be going stir crazy, and there's no learning that's going to be happening when you're bummed out that you haven't been able to go outside in over a week. Well, and I can definitely say, for me, I say um, PT trials go on. Of Kids are highly competitive. So who can do jumping jacks and long goes to do whatever ridiculous exercise. They get really competitive. And I personally have noticed with the LED lights, because we've had a few gray days here, I'm noticing I do better with the LED lights. I get a little bit more energy. I know it doesn't mm -hmm. give me the same vitamins that the um, sad lights do. Mm -hmm. But it, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. But, yes, I, I am mean, a little schadenfreude. They're like, what activities do I do with my kids? What can I do to get them to sit down and write? What can, I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, but sometimes you just got to, like, the other day somebody else, I think it was Michelle, she's like, I'm just scrapping, I'm scrapping school today. We're just not learning. And, you know, sometimes you just have to, like, let that go, you know, just have that oh, be totally. an indoor, you know, making fort day. I mean, go easy on yourself and the kids, you know? Well, and I mean, if you want to be technical, Legos, Fort Days, those are all structural engineering. That's there a very high-paying job and very high-level education. Yeah. We're going with it. I have friends who went to school for four years <laughs> to get that degree. And, and I'm sorry, but video games, that does some good stuff to your brain, too. So let the kids play video games, for God's sakes. <laughs> Amen, sister. Oh, we, we totally do that. But so, okay, so going on this week is Valentine's Day. Do you guys do anything for Valentine's Day? Do you do any education? Do you do any fun stuff for Valentine's Day? So we usually um, get together with our home, our community group for homeschool and pass out Valentine cards. We didn't make it this year. This was our first year. We didn't make it. Um, we usually have like a dinner that the whole family goes together. We're, we're all each other's Valentines. So this year it's going to be just that, which... That's fine. Every year we've gone and we've done really cool stuff. We've bought, you know, before we've bought um, paper crowns um, where everybody just gets a crown and they say, you know, Happy Valentine's Day from, I think my son was the one that did it last year and gave the big, bigger crowns, the bigger paper crowns to the teachers. Um, you know, I've seen a few things online where everybody's got the printables to get pencils and that sort of thing. There's even, there was even a little a thing was like the halos, tangerines have the little hearts that you could put around little tangerine or tangelos, you know. Yeah, I have a so, link with five of those and I think I've got the ruler and the glow stick one yeah. and the tangerine one. I've got I've got a bunch of those over and on those are really family. cute. This year was the first year that we didn't do it, so I'm kind of bummed. But it's it's never been a thing where we've missed out on just because we were homeschoolers. In fact, it's actually been a lot of fun, you know, because it's a smaller group and you're not all stressed out and and everybody. And this has been a big conversation online, and I'm like, what is wrong with people? <laughs> everybody gets a Valentine if there's 16 kids in the junior what high is area. Up with that? I think Whoa! we both. Saw it. <laughs> well, we both know a blogger. People who, out there. Right. We both know a blogger no. who went on Fox and Friends to talk about yeah, a letter Jessica. that a teacher sent home. Right. Jessica Gottlieb, right. And that was standard operating procedure all the way through elementary school. We put names on them, but not so much in kindergarten. I understand the issues with that. But who doesn't do that? But there were a few, there were a lot of my friends, Jessica and then like Elizabeth and a bunch of my friends that I absolutely adore. You know, they're just like have these strong opinions. And I'm like, it's Valentine's Day. Come on. You know, just. Right. Get over it. <laughs> well, and it's the other idea that the schools, especially when you do it in a school classroom or like when you get together with your co-op kind of thing, you are forcing people to participate in a group activity. You should be nice to them. Yeah. versus we are going to have this mandatory Valentine's Day party in your class and you're not going to get any Valentines because of whatever reason. Right, right. I mean, and, you know, if it came down to it, I don't know. I mean, wouldn't it just be fun if like one day everybody had a Valentine, um, like even like a secret say, I don't know, you could do so many different things with it or whatever, but then you, what if you like get picked by like the goofy kid that everybody picks on or whatever, you know, like I just feel like, 
I, you know, there were some years where I had some goofy years where I probably would not have gotten many Valentine cards. The majority had of it, grade school for me probably would have been in that. Had kind it not of thing. been for that. Well, and then in high school, everybody just kind of does their own thing, right? But when you're younger, you, you're being, you're kind of, you're, te you're, I don't know. It's just why crush a kid? Right, and it's <laughs> it, to me a big part is that mandatory participation versus like in high school. I know because I participated in the groups who did it, we would sell flowers as fundraisers mm -hmm. and have we them did, deliver um, during class or candy, we did depending on the telegrams. We did like singing telegrams. Oh, see, so we did candy grams. Oh, it was so much fun. Candy grams was for, um, was for something else. I forget what they did that for. But the singing telegrams was awesome because then you had like bands. So you could be a singing telegram band for the day. Oh, and wow. you would go like dress up with all your friends with tutus and wings or whatever and and you would get people would order you you know they would like pay. <coughs> and it was a fundraiser and it went to whatever class and whatever and it was fun um but it was just so much fun like watching like a, a group of you know like the um, there, was, there was the one band that they were in the jazz band and they were so cute but you know looking back I was probably nerdy they had a little banjo, like the main guy had a banjo, and they would come in and they would sing little Valentine songs. Oh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Valentine's Day was always so much fun, which is why I'm like, why is everybody so hating right well, now? Well, see, but that for us wasn't a mandatory thing. If you wanted to go buy one for somebody, you would. But you didn't, everyone didn't have to sit there and watch everyone get one except for them per se. Except you for did, you. Right. <laughs> like, how yeah. do you know that you're the you're the guy that nobody wants to hang out with? Oh, I don't know. Nobody came to bring you a Valentine. Right. No. So, but so yeah, yeah. So like, at least homeschool, they don't miss out on that. They, you know, I don't think there's been any home any Valentine drama. You know, because we're all. I mean, everybody that's together in the community. That's the thing about when we get together. It's community. We don't want to have any bad feelings towards anybody, even kids that you don't like. You're just like, you know what, just give them a damn Valentine. Don't be such a little pud. Well, so. and it's the other side, too. The other one I'm waiting for, I'm part of a local Facebook food group, is I'm waiting for the complaints to start about the candy that is being sent to the classrooms. <laughs> Every it's year Valentine's. there's so much complaining about it, about the processed food. and the Because I don't know if in your area, if this is statewide, but... Basically, you can't bring homemade food into the classroom. No, anymore. no, you can't. Somebody said that too. Somebody was like, "Oh, you could. You sh I like to bring in cookies because I don't like to go to the store." And I was like, "We can't bring in cookies. What are you talking about?" I was like, "Yeah, you can get sued for that." But right. Th th like not in our community groups. In our community groups, we bring homemade stuff all the time. It's not a big deal. But that's so, kind of a nice thing too that you can kind of control that. You're you're not having that put upon you. You, my kids are still going to get treats, just possibly not their body weight and sugar. Right. And well, that's a big, but that's a big complaint that I see around a lot of, how come this parent would send all this stuff? And I'm like, oh, just so talk your kid out of it and throw it away. Right. There you go. So here's, you here's the interesting thing, and, and, I, and this is kind of going to the homeschool community, is, is, you know, when you get together with groups, you, you have to kind of like date the groups, you know. And I found a group that works for me, and luckily it happens to be connected to our, our system. But I had gone to a couple of other um groups within that that were a little too far away and I you know we kind of clicked with the families but it was just too far of a drive and whatever and so I tried to find now they've got one they had one that was closer to where we were living and um, but I was trying to find other groups that were closer to where I was at and I, I ran into that I ran into like some really heavily granola kind of you know groups that were just like they they made their own applesauce and you know and, and they were really freaking judgy about what you brought to feed your kid to for a snack and I didn't want to go through that every time but I felt like okay is this what homeschooling is about do I have to be a perfect mom that sacrifices hours and hours not only picking the apples and doing the applesauce not but actually growing the damn apple tree you know I mean to make sure that it's organic I mean people are people can get really over the top I mean there are some groups that rival PTA groups in regular schools. Amen. So if you are in a homeschool situation and you're trying to find a social group for your kids and you find one and you're like, oh, my God, everybody here is just a big mm-mm, keep looking. 
there are plenty of forums that you're going to find in your area. Just get online, Google, and Google, and Google, and ask people. And, and if you see people that, you know, are at the coffee shop, I run into so many homeschoolers at coffee shops that obviously they're homeschooling because they've got, like, a science workbook and a pencil, and it's, like, 1030 in the morning, and the kid is on a laptop, and mom is on a laptop. Guess and we what? all need coffee. Yeah, and guess what? They're probably homeschooling. So ask them, hey, I see that, do you homeschool? Are you, is there any group that you're involved in? you got to go out and find, it's just like dating, you know, go out and find people and see if you connect, and if you don't, well, just, you know, hey, you enjoy your homemade applesauce. I'm going to go hang out with these people, you know. And then there are, you know, like I went to a Christian church, and I knew a lot of people that went to a group, and so I went and I checked out theirs, but it was like really, really, really like super-duper holy roller Christian, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is a little too much Holy Mary, Mother of God for me, so I had to back out of that one. I'm like, I need a little more secularity, so <laughs> I was Catholic too. So, but well, now I understand. All, I'm in my Buddhist corner, so I'm I'm Zen now. Namaste. Well, see, my problem isn't the the Zen and the Buddha. It's more along the lines of um, technology Jesus. and video games. Oh, yeah. I well, like I like that mixed in with with my viewpoints because I mean, obviously, I I'm a Christian too, and uh, a lot of my involvement has been in Christian groups. But you get a little. You let your kids watch that, or they spend oh, how much time on the video games? That's I mean, PG thirteen. They said the S word. Which S word? Oh my God! They said the S H word. No, they said stupid. I'm like, I say stupid. You're stupid. Oh my God! <laughs> How about the other S word? Shut up. <laughs> See, and I don't. I don't care. You want to make your granola. You want to weave your cloth. You want to pay ten times too much for some <laughs> organic vegetables that aren't really organic. That's awesome sauce. Go Have for it. it. <laughs> don't judge me and assume that I'm a bad mom because I'm not investing the time you think I should. Well, and see, that's the thing is you don't you move along fast enough for before their judgment even like lands on your shoulder, you know. So that's the thing. You do. I'm not as good at that. I I have to be honest. And and part of the problem is I do have. To do I moved to completely different countries. Right. Bye bye. I don't like that group anymore. I'm out. <laughs> well, and I think part of the thing is though too is. Teaching your children and teaching myself to get along in a group sometimes is they may not necessarily approve or understand of everything you do, but as long as they treat you with respect, I'm fine with that. Yeah, there are I a couple of kids. Um, how much working do you do? How much traveling do you do? Oh, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. like, whatever. You know what I get? I get a lot of, can I go with you? I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. It's that funny combination of they think that you are abandoning your family until they want to know if you've got something for them to do with it. Right. You know? <laughs> no, so, you know, I haven't, I haven't come up with too much to get, uh, too much of that. Only because, like I said, I, I've kind of moved along to groups that are a little more, a little more like me. We still have little conflicts yeah. between the kids and even the parents. Like I had some issues with one mom in particular, and I was just like, I finally was like, you know what? I need to bring in the teacher. I need to bring in our or the person that's in charge and to be like, you know what, she's not my son's mom. I no longer want her to have any authority over him. She's a volunteer, and as long as he's respectful, that's fine. I don't want her correcting him. There are other adults there that are in that are actually in charge of this community function and that they may have say in what he does. I don't want her correcting him anymore. And that ended. And, there, and that was, like, the most conflict that I've had ever in the groups. But, you know, there's going to be somebody everywhere. I don't do a lot of the um, co-op type teaching type stuff. So that's not uh, them having authority over my kids. I mean, I did, like, a uh, play and stuff. But part of it is one of the two people who was running it happens to be my best friend. So, you know, that makes it a yeah. little bit yeah. easier. <laughs> yeah, go listen to Aunt Sarah. Go away. Leave me alone. <laughs> Teacher's pet. Oh, Yeah. Oh, totally. So, um, do you do anything academic for Valentine's Day? No, girl. Valentine's Day is all fun all day. But you probably do, so you tell me. <laughs> Actually, I'm on the opposite side of, I believe that Valentine's Day is such a made-up BS holiday that I don't do anything with it. You know love, love. Now, you oh. know heart. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes and no. I mean, we'll do a little something for the kids and give them a couple little presents. 
my husband and I are boring. We've been married a long time. We're just boring old married people, and we like it that way. We started that way. <laughs> uh, but I noticed, because I was thinking about this, you know, doing this podcast and thinking about coming up and going, oh, for, for St. Patrick's Day, I'm all over the history of St. Patrick, the history of Ireland, the and fact how there's it's no like such a BS about the snakes. Yeah, there oh, yeah. was no St. Patrick. This is why right. I am no longer Catholic. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. I, I really do like St. Patrick and what the holiday stands for. But that's what I mean. I really Drinking? go into it. Drinking, right? That's the holiday. That's beer. Green beer. Woo Actually, that was originating here in the United States, not in Ireland where real Irish people live. Go figure. <laughs> and blue was the color of Ireland until the people in Chicago got hold of it. But that's a whole other subject, and we will digress and get into that see, on St. Patrick's see, Day. History. That's awesome. But that's what I mean. I realized I've not done any St. Valentine's actual, like, St. Valentine's history with my children at all. Mm -hmm. it, it's just such a nothing holiday to me. But speaking of that, then the next holiday is Monday, and that is President's Day. Yay! Oh. Um, <laughs> do you do anything for President's Day? We do. I am a huge fan of Constitution. So we do a lot of, like, Constitution reading and kind of parsing the phrases and what does it mean and where have they been challenged and that sort of thing. And every year we kind of have a similar conversation but every year they're a little older and they understand a little more and a little more has happened in our country. Yeah. And so, you know, the, we kind of talk about current events and run them through the filter of the Constitution, unlike some of our politicians. <laughs> so, behave yourself. <laughs> I am behave. behaving myself. But this year we actually get to what I was going to do, um, not on the U.S. President's Day because that would be weird, but um, for another holiday in another country, go through that constitution as well. Because, like, the Mexican constitution is based on the French constitution yes. and French law and things like what we're used to here in the United States. And now I'm going to be able to, during our President's Day discussion, we'll be able to kind of um, show the black and whites and, you know, like, uh, comparing one versus the other. So in the United States, you are innocent until proven guilty in, this sounds so bad, but by Mexican constitution, you're guilty and you must prove yourself innocent. So you're not guilty, but you are under suspicion or whatever, you have to prove yourself innocent. The burden of proof is upon the accused, not the accused. Exactly, accuser. exactly. Which wow. there are, I know, right? And you think about, okay, how would that work with so many people that have gotten away, especially with double jeopardy, right? So I'm thinking, God, if that, if that law, if that way of thinking had been applied to a lot of cases here in the United States, a lot less shit might have gone down. Oh, oh! <laughs> See now, the S -word. <laughs> you did, and it wasn't stupid. Um, I'm kind of on the other side. I am... Um, but, 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 let me go back to that, is this, how awesome though, that the burden of proof is you cannot just be thrown in jail and, and never be seen again, unless you're in Guantanamo Bay. But that's another story. Yeah, but, but those aren't American criminals. Um, there's a quote. They're actually, oh, we should yeah. do, they're not okay. any criminals. That's okay. Right. Um, <laughs> but there's a quote, and I cannot remember who it is or the exact wording, but basically it is better for an accused man, I mean for a, a guilty man to go free than for an innocent man to be falsely. Until that guilty man kills you. And then, ah, maybe not so much. I mean... Yes and no. I, I think I come from I come from the legal background of uh, my mother's a criminologist and two out of three dads are cops. So we're very pro-arresting people. Do not get me wrong. It's not like we're wusses, but there is something to the beauty of our system. Oh, absolutely. And, and I mean, that... My, but my see, the other a, side, we inspired the French Constitution. We did. Yes, but, I believe we did. We we inspired the revolution. We inspired the revolution. But at the same time, the French humanism had taken over so much right. that it'd be really interesting and, and more of our declaration of independence than even our actual constitution inspired the French. So it'd right. be an interesting conversation that while we're the capitalist society, the French constitution actually talks about, I mean, the French, you know, was it? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of, of happiness is more of the pursuit of property. Right. The original thing. So that would be a really interesting study. Right. right so, so that's kind of like where we were going on that. So, so the, other, the other thing, too, is that um, 
you know, it's just how you have to really be aware of the laws in other countries. You can't just take your your focus, your set of rules, your upbringing, get on a plane, you know, with your little backpack and head to a different country and expect that your constitution is going to protect you in another country. So that's kind of what we're trying to do too. We're trying to be respectful and not be ugly Americans in another country. You know, really understanding the laws and customs, you know, to not not necessarily just be safe, but to be res respectful, you know. Yeah. Well, and I know also in the same vein of doing things with kids, um, you can do things of all ages. I know uh, my best friend had a President's Day party where Ooh. they actually like learned about the presidents, and they were like all in kindergarten, first grade, that kind of thing. I don't think there was a kid over second grade. Aww. And they made those little mini pies, made like little mini cherry pies and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. She is obviously the creator of Artsy Fartsy, one of this duo, because I know. <laughs> but the kids adored it and still talk about it all these years later. Um, I actually found a printout, a, a printable that I think I'm going to use, and it's made by Copycat Books, and it's actually oh. cursive printables. Oh. And, yeah. And nobody does cursive anymore. <laughs> well, well, but they've got traditional modern italic, and the kids all of a sudden have decided they want to learn cursive. But the nice thing is they're done with, like, the Bill of Rights and the Pledge of Allegiance and things oh, like neat. that. Right. And um, I know I am planning for tomorrow there to be a uh, President's Day Printables link up on homeschoolhangout.tv. Yay! So people need so to give me something to do with my kids next week. Yeah. Um, the thing I really like about this, though, is it is for older kids. It's hard to find. I'm, I'm out of the preschool stage. I no yeah. longer need my kids to learn how to cut hearts. I want them to actually learn more things and there's not as many worksheet type things out there for that. And you really got to keep that age group engaged or they are out of here. So, so true. So speaking of engagement and that age group, you have a child to get to a concert. So I'm going to bid have you to go out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bid you adieu and then I'm going to jump into uh, our tool of the week. So should right. have a great week. We'll All right. See you next week. Great chatting with everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Sugar. So every week we try to bring you a tool or two that will help enrich your homeschool life. Some are free, some are paid. And this week I'm talking about booksshouldbefree.com. I've got my little screen over here. And it's a great site. It's literally booksshouldbefree.com. And it's a hub. It is not a provider of any of these books, but it will tell you where you can acquire them for free as audiobooks or as um, ebooks legally, as far as I can tell, I haven't seen anything illegal. It's always questionable. Um, they tie in a lot of stuff from the Gutenberg Project, along with LibriVox, which is a provider of audiobooks on public domain books. So, like for LibriVox, you can actually just go record a public domain book and upload it, and they would love to have it. But this is a great hub. So, uh, and I'm looking at Emma is a great example. Emma is a great book by Jane Austen. My daughter loves it. It is actually in the public domain right now. So, before you say, oh, you're just chipping booksellers and everything, yes and no. I can only afford so many books, and my children read so much. But the other nice thing is, instead of going to the Gutenberg Project and downloading their format, it will tell me where I can get it from Amazon and from Barnes & Noble. So it will work with my Kindle e-reader and it will work with my daughter's Nook. So it's a great hub, including versions for the audio to download. So I really encourage you to check it out. It's all ages. It's all types of books. It is booksshouldbefree.com. And then my other uh, go-to for audiobooks, especially for trips, is LibraVox. L-I-B-R-A-V-O-X. I believe it's .com. And those, like I said, are all free audiobooks. Some of them are professionally done, and some of them are literally somebody going, hey, you don't have a version of this. I'm going to sit down and record it, and then I'm going to upload these files for free for people to use. And I think it's fabulous. There's also the Gutenberg Project. And that is, once again, it's aimed at public domain books. Uh, copyrights only last so long on books. That is why you will see something like, I'm, I'm looking at this, around the world in 80 days. You can find 15 ver different versions of it because the copyrights actually expired on it. 
So those are available for free in the public domain. And it's great. You can find them, and um, books should be free specifically. They're well organized. LibriVox is well organized by authors and by types. And those are my tips of the week, my tools of the week. Um, especially, you know, like Sugar was saying, uh, for kids who are readers, it's so important to engage them. And if you don't engage their minds, you're wasting this time period you have to make them do their own education, frankly, by reading, but also to develop that love of learning and the written word. And so that's my uh, tools of the week. I am surprised we have no questions this week. So this is going to be a short broadcast. Uh, let us know what kind of subjects you like us to talk about, what kind of resources you're looking for. Um, leave it in the comments. Uh, send your friends even who don't homeschool but have their kids stuck with them all the time uh, due to the snow. And maybe we can help them find some great activities to meet their kids' interests too. I'm Jacqueline. Find me on Twitter at NerdMom. You can find Sugar Jones at, at Sugar Jones. Um, and uh, just uh, follow us on our Google Plus page, and I will see you next week. Have a delightful week. Bye.